June 1935. After much theorizing and practice in clinics for the privileged, the moment for action has finally arrived. Volterra is the right place. It's an avant-garde hospital, the perfect place for a doctor who really wants to make a difference. November 20th. Crossing the threshold of the asylum was similar to entering another dimension. A world of smells, noises, and images, which it is almost impossible to imagine, describe, or explain. August 1936. The situation is similar to that in many other institutions. The department is overcrowded. Hundreds of patients are supervised by a handful of nurses who are forced to tie the more distressed ones to their beds or to radiators. They do 24-hour shifts. It's impossible to work like this. We doctors rarely see the female patients, and it's the nurses who tell us what's happening to the women. March 12, 1938. Renee T., 16 years old. Menstruation at age 12. Housewife. Father unknown. Mother a seamstress. Admitted an observation yesterday morning from Pontedera, accompanied by a police officer authorized by the examining magistrate of the Court of Pisa, to be admitted for a psychiatric evaluation, which I have carried out. Medical certificate. Mental illness preceded by warning signs. Has suffered from depression for a year, believing she had tuberculosis. Food deprivation. We can't read this document. It is forbidden. We mustn't. If they find out, there will be trouble. Have you ever wondered who you are? Yes, of course you've wondered. I never had children, I don't think. Let's read it. I must understand. I must remember. She is frightened, hears noises and ghosts, presents serious signs of anxiety, psychosis, suffers from hallucinations. She is anxious, confused, her expression is distressed, a questioning look as if terrified, disoriented. She feels confused, hears voices shouting in her head. She doesn't understand things properly. She has been feeling unwell for two or three months. When questioned, she replies, My mother wants to hurt me. I am always scared of her. She chases me. Why are you here? I argued with my mother and was so upset that I felt like my head was spinning. There was a woman there who wanted to force me into a life of prostitution. They wanted to condemn me to be burned at the stake. Children whispered, called my name. March 16th. She couldn't sleep last night. They wanted to condemn her to be burned at the stake. April 4th. Transferred to the calm ward, still under my supervision. Yes, that's true. The ward where Amara was. Yes, the stake. The children wanted to burn Rene. She had to pay for what she'd done, like witches, at the stake. April 21st. She's more awake this morning and is responding to questions, complains of headaches. She became agitated when she found out her mother was there. She says that one day, many years earlier, she was with a friend of hers and met a man who made her get into a car and took her for a ride. He made her smoke cigarettes and drink liquor, and the man showed her certain 
things. He tried to hurt her and made her go crazy. She says he promised to marry her and made her swear to keep what had happened a secret. These facts were essentially confirmed by her mother. After that, she became arrogant, impatient, and hostile towards her family, especially her mother. She started taking off her clothes in public. Her moods would swing from laughter to tears. She rants. She pleasures herself. I can't remember these things. Only the guilt, the stake. I know I deserved to pay for that guilt. I knew it even then. She was uncooperative during the examination. She didn't want to be stripped and her body remained rigid. Voluntary attention almost totally absent. Probable hallucinations. April 25th. Confused ideas. Unable to maintain a spontaneous conversation. Reflex is all normal. Reactive pupils. Let's find Amara and we'll find the full medical records. This is the road we used to take. If it weren't for her, in the grounds on that bench in spring, so many days. It was an escape, watching nature around us as she talked and smiled. And then there were the kitchens, Sometimes we stole food and ran back to the bench to eat it in secret, and we laughed. She did things to me. Sometimes she touched me. 
In the shower I felt her body against mine for the first time. It was a shiver that warmed my soul. Eyes closed, the light slipped away. She wasn't in the system. He wouldn't let her in. That's it. She must be the key. The key to my memories. To the reasons why. <laughs>